Uh, so Brother Joe's going to say one more time, and uh, I'll be bringing forth the word after you come. Let's say amen.
God, is standing in need of a breakthrough. God, somebody, God, is looking for answers, God. God, to their problems, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for how you're working things out. Lord, we thank you, God, for how you're turning things around. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory, God, for what you've done. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're doing right now. And Lord, by faith, Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're getting ready, God, to do for us. So, Lord, God, we enter, God, into your word. Lord, we ask you, God, to open my ears, God, to hear your word. God, open up my eyes, God, to see in the scripture realm. God, open up our minds, God, so that we can comprehend, God, of what you're saying to us. Lord, God, anoint us, God, from the turn of my head, God, to the soul of my feet. This will help me in the praise and glory, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put those of us here together with Jesus.
our backs are up against the wall, when we are left standing there in a crossroad, when we feel like the world is on our shoulders, when we try to look and there is nowhere to look, when we try to turn realizing that there's nowhere to turn, when we try to go but there is nowhere else to go. But Paul, people of God, he urges us in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Some of y'all have come into the house of the Lord this morning and you are standing right there at a crossroad. You're standing there at a crossroad dealing with problems with your family, dealing with issues and complications in your marriage, dealing with issues with your career, dealing with issues on the job. And it seems like you've come too far in the road and it seems like you've been carrying burdens with the world on your shoulders. But I would like to propose a question for you on today, child of God. Can you still give him thanks? So as we drove through the text this morning, the lepers, we're here in the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter. The lepers, they are standing at a crossroad. They're in a season of their lives when there's a fork right in the middle of the road because they have a condition called leprosy. Leprosy is also known as Hansen's disease. It's the name for disease that is caused by microorganisms involved in bacteria. Leprosy begins with brownish red spots on the face, ears, forearms, thighs, and even your buttocks, which later becomes thick and nodules with subsequent loss of tissue and then contraction and deformity. So leprosy is also characterized by numbness or an affected area of the skin and deformities such as fingers like claws resulting from paralysis and consequent muscle wasting. So when we look at the lepers, people of God, we do not know how they ended up with their condition. Maybe perhaps the lepers, they were born with this condition of leprosy. Maybe some time in their lives as they were living, as they were growing up to be men, the leprosy came at some points of their lives. But what we do know is that the lepers, they have a condition that only God can fix. And some of y'all in a situation right now, you don't know how you ended up with this particular condition in your life. Life just happened. Things just came up. And, and you have a certain condition that you're dealing with. And now I'm here today to let you know that only God can fix it. Yes, you tried everything else. You tried different avenues. You, you went to different places, still leaving with dissatisfaction. And the reason why you're still dissatisfied about uh, the stuff that you have to go through is because uh, you're in a condition that only God can fix. So the Bible tells us as Jesus is entering into this certain village, the lepers, they stood afar off. So as Jesus is passing by, the Bible instructs us that the lepers are standing afar off. Pastor, why are the lepers standing afar off away from the general population? Well, according to Leviticus 13 and 46, Levitical law stated that anyone who is ceremonially or ritually unclean, the person must live alone and he or she must live outside of the camp. So the ten lepers, they are the outcasts. They, they have now become disenfranchised all because they have a condition called leprosy. Verse 13 declares in the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter, that they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. So the ten lepers, they had enough sense to call on the name of Jesus. They, they praised him right there on the spot. They worshiped him for being the master, and they submitted a petition to Jesus to have mercy on them. The Bible tells us in verse number 14, and so when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, somebody shout one of them. 
One of them, when he saw that he was healed, the Bible declared that he returned. He, he, he returned and, and went to God with a loud voice and he glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So out of all the ten lepers here in the text, people of God, only one decides to turn around and go back to give thanks. So I began to wonder, people of God, I, I began to wonder why didn't the other nine lepers go back to tell God thank you? Again, I wonder, Miss Linda, one decided to, to, to go back, but, but, but what happened to the other nine? We preach all the time about the one going back, but we never preach about the other nine not going back to tell God thank you. So one reason why I believe that the other nine didn't go back is because they were tired of receiving the same results. They were, they were tired, they were frustrated uh, with receiving the, the same results. They tired of receiving the same old bad news, dealing in the same situation. So in order for this to make sense, you have to be able to read Leviticus chapters 13 and 14. You have to be able to understand, people of God, that when someone has a swelling or a blister or a shiny spot on the skin that might signal a serious skin disease on the body, they were to bring them to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priest's sons. So after they brought uh, the lepers to the priest, the, the, what the priest would do, after they brought the, the, the lepers to the priest, uh, the priest, they would then examine the lepers. They, they would yeah. begin to examine the skin of the lepers. And, and if the hair was sore, if it turned out white, and the sore appears to be more than skin deep, it was a serious skin uh, disease, and it was infectious. So after the priest had examined the skin condition, he would then pronounce that the lepers were to be labeled unclean. So the Bible tells us in Leviticus 13 and 14 that it was on the seventh day that the priest, they would begin to examine of the lepers again. So if they found out that they had this condition called leprosy, uh, the lepers, they would have to wait another seven days in order to go back and see the priest again. So in his judgment, if the priest, if, if they found out that this condition uh, was spreading, then uh, they would have to spread and diagnose this, this leper with quarantine for another seven days. And, and on the, the seventh day, the priest, they would examine him for a second time. And, and if the sore has faded away and has spread, then the priest will declare him to be clean. So the person, if they were declared clean, then they can go home and wash their clothes because they were labeled clean. However, uh, if this particular condition began to spread, people of God, then he must come back to the priest who would then have to conduct another examination. If the sore had, had spread, then the priest would pronounce him or her to be unclean. So people of God, for this to make sense, so the lepers, I want you to put this in today's society. We look at the lepers and their condition, they would not go away, and they had this condition, and as a result, they ended up with the same results, day after day, week after week, month after month. So the lepers, they are frustrated with going to church, going to see the priest Sunday after Sunday, and being diagnosed, being the outcast from the crowd. And so how in the world, people of God, can the lepers say, how in the world am I supposed to give God thanks for having blisters on my body, for having spots on my body? But what you have to understand is that there was one leper who had enough sense. He had enough sense that in the midst of what I am going through, in the midst of getting the same results, he made a decision to turn around to tell God thank you. And some of you walked into the house of the Lord this morning. You got complications. You got issues. You got problems that you're dealing with. And you say, Pastor, I've been coming to church. I've been faithful. I've, I've been faithful in my giving. I've been faithful in my attendance. I've been faithful with God. And, and it seems like I'm getting the same results week after week, month after month, day after day. But Paul charges 
calls us again in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 that in everything to give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. It's easy to thank God when things are going well but the true authentic assessment of your gratitude is when you can thank him even when he doesn't do it. You may feel like the other nine lepers but you got to be determined to be like the one leper to turn around and tell God thank you. I've learned to thank God
Some of you lost your joy. Some of you lost your peace. Some of you lost a job. Some of you lost some loved ones. But Paul reassures us again that in everything to give God thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. Can you still thank him for everything that caused you to lose your confidence? Can you still thank him for that situation that caused you to lose your self-esteem? Can you thank God for everything that you had to endure? And David reminds us in Psalm that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And I just want to know, can anybody thank God that you can bless the Lord at all times? With trouble on every side, with compl complications in my life, I decided to bless the Lord at all times. So I can recall people, God, that during my professional basketball career, playing professional basketball overseas in England for the Newcastle Eagles, the coach calls me into the office, Ricky, we're deciding to release you. And you know, I know what Paul says and, and, and everything to give thanks, but, but God, how, how can I thank you when I just got released from my job? Lord, I, Lord, I, I had to fly about 13 to 14 hours from, from England to Chicago, Chicago, back to Chattanooga. Lord, how in the world uh, can I have the determination to, to tell you thank you? Lord, how am I supposed to tell you thank you? So, 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 so when, uh, even in business, when, when expenses exceed revenue for the week, oh, how in the world uh, am I supposed to tell you thank you? Uh, and I was reminded of what Paul even tells us, reminds us in Romans 8 and 28, and we know uh, that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those uh, who are called according uh, to his purpose. Uh, so I came to release over your life, people, God, uh, that if you could just give God thanks, uh, Things are getting ready to work out for your good. And I don't care what mountain you're facing in your life. I don't care what kind of valley you may be in. You got to learn how to thank God in the midst of it all because things are getting ready to work out for your good. I need somebody to praise God for the good, the bad, and the ugly, that they're all working together for the good. The ups and the downs are working together for your good. Things are getting ready to work out for your good. So you have to learn how to thank God in everything. But can I really tell you why you need to thank God for everything? Can, can, can I tell you why you need to thank God for everything? You need to thank God in everything because you didn't get destroyed during the process. I wish I had a church that helped me preach it. It may be somebody watching on Facebook. The reason why you need to thank God is because you didn't get destroyed during the process. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 through 18, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Here it is, struck down, but not destroyed. Some of y'all been through some stuff where you were pressed on all sides. You have to go through some stuff that almost killed you, but it didn't crush you. You have to deal with some stuff that left you confused, entangled, and frustrated, but God brought you through it. You were persecuted, oppressed, with different influences. You were struck down, but through the midst of it all, you were not destroyed. And I just want to know, can anybody give God glory and give God praise? What the, what the enemy meant for evil, God did it for your good. Somebody ought to open up your mouth and give God praise that it was during the process that you were not destroyed, but some way God held you together. You're still standing. You still got a praise on your lips. You're still telling God, thank you. Lord, I thank you for the mountain. I thank you for the valley. Lord, I thank you that I was not destroyed, but Lord, you lifted me up out of the valley and I came out giving God, Lord, somebody open Verse 15 in Luke the 17th chapter. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, the Bible says in the King James Version that he turned back and with a loud voice he glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. 
and he was a Samaritan. So there was only one leper who realized that while I am still here, I am going to return back to God and I'm going to nip up a sound that gets God's attention. I am going back to a posture of praise and prayer and thanksgiving to tell God thank you. So through the midst of having scars, through the midst of me getting the same results, through the midst of things not working in my favor, I got one more push. So the Lord spoke to me on this past week. For those who did not know, you have entered into the ninth month. You have entered into the month of September. And you've had complications to come forth in your life. You've had issues to come up in your family. You've had unforeseen circumstances to come up in your career, in school, and in your business. But just like the one leper, he gave God one more push. Some of you got to learn how to praise God until something happens. Some of you got to pray until something happens. Something special is getting ready to come out of the month of September. I came to release a prophetic word in this place that something significant is coming out of this season. The only thing you got to do is give him thanks. And I just want to know, does anybody have enough sense through the hell that you've been going through? I'm still going to tell God thank you. Lord, thank you for the sickness. Thank you for how they walked out on me. Thank you for my family being discombobulated. Lord, I just want to tell you thank you because I'm getting ready to give you one more push. And I just want to know, can anybody begin to take your hands and begin to push? God is getting ready to work something on the inside of you. There was a reason why you have to go through all the hell. There was a reason why you've been going through the complication. It's because God is telling you on today that you got one more push. I don't care how discouraged you are. I don't care what happened in your life. I don't know what turn. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, you got one more push. You got one more push, baby. So hold your head up and stick your chest out. That it's not over for you. The only thing you got to do is praise your way through that situation until God turn that situation around. I need somebody to open up your mouth up and give God glory that you're going to continue pushing in the things of God. You got one more push. God, you got one more push. So Jesus answered and said, where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? In verse 17, he answered and said, where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? So everybody, the other nine, they walked out. They got what they needed and they went their way. But the one had enough faith to go back and give God glory. And because he had enough faith to turn around and stop what he was doing, the leper got set up for a miracle. And I believe, people God, that God is that if you can just increase your faith and give God one more praise, God is about to give you exactly what you need. I don't know who's in need of a miracle. I don't know who's in need of a breakthrough. But if you can just praise your way, if you can just put your faith in God, God is getting ready to give you exactly what you need. So if you need a breakthrough, you got to learn how to thank him in advance for it. If you need peace, if you need a miracle, you got to thank him for it. Why? Because the Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Thank him and bless his holy name. Can you still give God thanks? So you got to learn how to give God thanks. So as the musicians begin to come, I want to leave you with one scripture in 2 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. It's the scripture right before 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. I'm going to read it. It says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. So this simply means that no matter what you're going through, you still have to take on the posture a prayer. So you got to pray without ceasing. So no matter how difficult it gets, you got to learn how to pray. 
halfway through some stuff. Once again, push P U S H. Pray until something happens. Some of you gotta praise until something happens. But if you don't get anything out of the service on today, Paul says that in everything to give God thanks. For this is the will of God. The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Some of y'all can testify in this place that you've been in some situations where it's hard to tell God thank you. Lord, I got problems on every side. Lord, it seems like pressure is on me with dealing with financial issues, financial crisis, dealing with marital issues, dealing with financial stuff. This stuff has been coming left to right in your life. But the Lord spoke to me on this past week. Ricky, can you still give me thanks? I have complications even in my life, even as a second pastor of this church. Yes, I'm going through just like everybody else is going through. But the Lord stopped me, Ricky, can you still give me thanks? With trouble, with insurmountable circumstances, God is asking, can you be like the one left you? To tell me thank you. Everybody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Some of you have been like the lepers. You have a condition. You have a problem issue that you're in right now. Some unforeseen circumstances have creeped up on you and they caught you by surprise. You didn't see it coming. You don't even know how. Lord, why am I in this situation? Lord, why did this have to happen to me? God is asking you, can you still give him thanks even in the midst of it? Can you still have a heart of gratitude? Can you still have the faith to believe God, Lord, that no matter what I'm going through, Lord, you're able, God, to work it out for me. Hallelujah. In everything, give God thanks. Some of you have been questioning God, but what is your will for my life? Or what am I supposed to be doing? The one thing that you can always do is to give God thanks. You may not understand it. You may not understand what happened happen to you. But God says, in everything, God well, thanks, but this is the will of God. This is the will that you're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. Saying, Pastor Rick, I'm in a situation right now. It's complicated. Some things that have transpired in my life. I don't know how I ended up in this situation. Seems like things haven't been working in my favor. I've, I've tried to do everything. I've been faithful. I've, I've been giving. I've been serving. But it seems like I'm always faced with the same conditions, with the same outcome. Hallelujah. I want to invite you down to this altar if you need prayer today. If this message was for you, if you know that you need to give God thanks in the midst of what you're going through, I want you to make your way down to this altar right now. Don't worry about who's beside you. Don't worry about who's looking. If you need prayer, if you need us to intercede on your behalf, we'd like to invite you down to this altar. God, 
name of Jesus, God, we pray, God, even for these souls on this altar. God, you know the situation that this woman of God has before you. God, those prayer requests, Lord, that she has, those unspoken prayer requests, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you work it out in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, even God, for strength and in this season. So, God, give her, God, the courage, God, to hang on and stay strong, God, in the midst of it all. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, meet every need, God. God, meet every prayer request, Lord, that she has before you. Lord, we thank you, God, for how you're working things out even now for her. We pray, God, even right now, God, for these children, God. We pray, Lord, that you touch them, God, in the mighty special way. God, bless them in school, God. Help them, God, to hang on and stay strong. God, we speak life. God, we speak strength. God, we even thank you, God, for peace. Right now, God, my things are getting ready, God, to work in our favor. So, God, we trust you, God, even. 
through the process. We trust you, God, through the breaking. We trust you, God, through the shaking. But we thank you, God, even right now, God, for the times, Lord, that we were beat down, God, the understanding, God, of what we have to go through. But God, we're leaving God today. We're telling you thank you. We thank you, Lord, because through the midst of it all, Lord, you're still good. Lord, your mercy, God, still endures forever. Bless your name, God. We reverence you, God, in this place. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody praise God. Put your hands together. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Thank God and amen. Come from wherever you are and bring an offering to the Lord. 